The Said Festival is normally thought of as a jubilee celebration, but it seems to have been first conducted as part of the elaborate and extensive coronation rites I discussed in my previous video. Thereafter, it would be celebrated on the pharaoh's 30th jubilee and every three years after that. This helps us in dating the reigns of the pharaohs, although there were kings who varied their said feasts for different reasons. The name probably means Festival of the Tail, presumably in reference to the ceremonial lion's tail or wolf's tail we see pharaohs wearing when they're depicted taking part. An alternative and equally plausible etymology is that it's the festival of investiture, from the verb meaning to clothe. There was an element to the festival in which the pharaoh was being tested. Tributes were offered to the pharaoh, much as they'd be offered to a god, and the successes of the pharaoh were celebrated. Among those successes, presumably, was having been alive long enough to celebrate a 30-year jubilee. The median reign of a pharaoh was something like eight to ten years, and even a well-nourished person with access to healthcare didn't have the greatest life expectancy. If you survived infancy at all, you might expect to reach a venerable 40 years, although as with all statistics like this, there were exceptions. The test part comes in the form of the physical exertions the pharaoh is depicted performing. These were not literally done in all cases, but I believe they were part of the rites because they showed the pharaoh's continuing vigour despite his age. We know from how pharaohs, and indeed most other important figures are almost always depicted, that the Egyptians had particular views when it came to fitness and the ideal shape of a human being. Not overly muscular like the figures of ancient Greece, but a figure you would call lithe and athletic. Not a figure all pharaohs would have conformed to, as the diet of a wealthy Egyptian would be loaded with sugar, and raising the sun each morning burns surprisingly few calories. There were, as I hinted, pharaohs who didn't conform to the 30-year then 3-year pattern for jubilees for various reasons. Two of these pharaohs are found in the 18th dynasty, a line that repeatedly modified and reinterpreted ancient tradition as part of their fresh outlook on Egyptianness, following a century of rule by what they considered to be foreigners. Hatshepsut's said festival has thrown some confusion onto the length of her reign. We're pretty sure she actually reigned as pharaoh for not much longer than 20 years, but she nevertheless celebrated a jubilee as if she'd reigned for 30. There are some plausible explanations for this. For one thing, she considered herself more royal and more eligible for the throne than her husband, Thutmose II, and may have been counting her reign as beginning from the death of her father, Thutmose I, or else some time into what historians now view as her co-regency with her husband and half-brother. She, of course, outlived her husband and more or less continued ruling until her death, so from her perspective, a said festival would be a way to demonstrate to the people that she is a figure of continuity. Akhenaten, boy wow does he get mentioned a lot when people say the word exception, started celebrating said festivals only two or three years into his reign. Not only was he famous for eschewing tradition, religiously, politically, architecturally, linguistically, he wasn't likely as popular as his far more successful father, Amenhotep III, and a said festival is a bit of bread and circuses that not only keeps people happy, but forces them to ritually tell him what a good job he's been doing. Way to go, Akhenaten. Good for you. In my video about pharaonic coronations, I hinted that the said festival was akin to a pharaoh renewing his vows, or renewing his commitment to his people. I think this comes through the continued vigour angle. Remember that many of the ceremonies surrounding pharaohhood had to do with the position's history as that of a warlord. If a pharaoh cannot run the ritual boundary flags, how can he take up the spear and lead his troops into battle? Well, naturally, if any ritual goes on for long enough, its literal meaning is chipped away. The new king kingdom pharaohs tended to think it was the job of the Egyptian people to reaffirm their loyalty, not the job of the pharaoh to reaffirm his fitness to rule. The Egyptians had a relationship with the ideal that comes through in a great many ways. The ideal king was, like the Nama of legend, a man of action and consideration. He was fit and strong, and spiritually a step above ordinary mortals. The said
Fed Festival and all of its components affirm all of these things. The festival seems to date at least as far back as the First Dynasty, and may even be pre-dynastic in origin, a literal test of the king's worthiness as a military man. Let me end by pointing out that no matter how long you reigned or how long you lived, if you were Lord of the Two Lands, you would get your said festivals, for, assuming proper mortuary provisions were made, the gods and the revered dead would pay tribute to you in the afterlife. What this means, of course, with so many pharaohs being honoured and presumably taking it in turns to honour each other, is that the spirits of pharaohs in the Duat have a much busier schedule than most of them did in life. Thank you for taking the time once again to honour me with a few minutes out of your day. I have a favour to ask. I know my channel is in a bit of a niche, so I can't expect astronomical growth, but I'd love to reach a thousand subscribers by the time of the anniversary of my first video, which is in January. If you've been enjoying my videos, please consider subscribing, and if you already have, sharing them around, because number go up, make happy. Among those celebrated for all of eternity ought to include my backers on patreon.com slash armchairegypt, who forever have my thanks and blessings. Until next time, my fellow armchair Egyptologists, life, prosperity, and health to you all. Thanks for watching. Head over to my channel for more, or click here to see what the YouTube demons think you should watch next. I hope you'll consider subscribing. If you'd like to support and collaborate on the channel with me, go to patreon.com slash armchair Egypt. You can also join my Discord community, there's an invite link in the description.